As many of you already know, season two of Westworld is about to premiere on HBO next week. And because of that, I wanted to do this tutorial video to show you how you can play the theme to Westworld on acoustic guitar. So it's pretty easy uh, at some parts. Um, there's some things that are a little bit tricky. I don't know, I'd maybe call this like an intermediate level piece. It's not as easy as the Stranger Things tutorial that I did a while back, um, but it does have some of the similar arpeggios in it that, um, so if you've, if you've done that one and you're looking for something a little bit more challenging, this, is, this would be a good one to try next. Um, so let's start it. Uh, basically, the first part the, is pretty quiet. It's, it's, it's pretty spare. There's just a couple chords. It's an A5 chord in open position, starting from the A string. Right? It just plays once. And then it goes to this F5, classic F5 power chord, um, which I play with my thumb over the top. Uh, it's something I really recommend. It's, it's, it's a little tricky to get this technique, but if you can do it, it makes a lot of other things easier. Uh, so we have that A5, going to the F5, and then it repeats, and when it does, it adds the melody. Okay, so that melody is basically, there's the chord, then B, C, E, and E again, and when we play E again, it's on top of an F major chord, and so that turns that F major chord into an F major seven chord. It's the classic space oddity chord. Um, so then that opening melody comes back again, but it's sort of in reverse. And that melody is E, D, C, and then back to the F major chord, this time only going as far as the A on the third string. So we call that, that A is the melody note. Um, I still have my index finger here on C, but I'm not picking that. I'm just picking four strings, the, the, four, the four lowest notes of the F chord. Uh, then we go back to A, then we go up. And this time, instead of going to F, we're gonna go to G5. I play it this way. It's kind of awkward, but sort of like a rock and roll G5 chord. Then, uh, with sort of a twist, we go to the B, B flat five. Uh, it's B flat five, right? So the root note's B flat, and it's a five chord, and there's a bit of melody on that one. This is one of the trickier parts of this. Um, of this chord melody because you gotta play this B flat, B flat five, and that's F on the first string. Then you open it up and play open E while still holding the B flat five chord. And then you sneak this uh, fourth finger in here and play the D on the, on the second string, so. Getting all that to work and sustaining the chord and playing those melody notes that in this particular uh, grip is, is a little challenging. So don't be surprised if you have to spend a little extra time on that one. Um, but anyway, we're, so we're playing this B flat. And then resolves back to A minor, full A minor chord for the first time. Okay, that's the sort of the first opening section. Uh, and then the real kind of main thematic melody kind of kicks in here over this. I do like a sort of miniature root position F chord. Um, I don't throw in the bass notes really here, um, but. So it's like an F major seven with the open E and you, and you pivot to get the F in the melody. And I kind of refresh the chord every time I play the E. It's just one way to handle the sort of dying sustain of the guitar is to refresh the chord as, as much as is possible without it sounding weird, I guess. So that phrase over the F harmony uh, and then sort of like a D5 over A directly back to the G5. Open G is the final note there, that melody, a D, C, G, right? And then back to the A5, 
Then we go to the D minor. Sort of a D minor with a uh, melody going back and forth between F and G on the first string. And then we play that F one last time. And you end on a C major chord. And then things get really complicated. So that is the end of the sort of chord part. And then we go into this run of kind of manic arpeggios, which is really fun to play when you get it right. And, and it can be very frustrating to learn when you're trying to work it up to speed. But just have patience uh, for this next part. So I'll, I'll show you how it works. Luckily, it's this very similar shape that we sort of cascade down from, from here. This again is B flat here on the, on the uh, low E string. And we go up a fifth chord, you know, root fifth octave. Then you reach back here, sorry. That's sort of like the ninth and the major third. So if you're, it's kind of like a major ninth arpeggio, I guess. Uh, there's no seventh in it. It's just sort of root, fifth, octave, ninth, tenth, right? Okay, and then there's three more of those here, but maybe before, if you're just learning this and if this type of technique is new to you, maybe sit on this chord and do it many times. Slowly. Just like that, it's five notes. One, two, three, four, five. And it's sort of five out of, if you're thinking in six, eight, like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's sort of five out of the six. So one, two, three, four, five. And then that last one is a little, gap that we can use to get to the next chord. So uh, I'll show you this. Uh, the next one, we're gonna move down chromatically from B flat to A to A flat to G. So when we go to the A, we have the same root fifth octave, but then the uh, and ninth, but we go to a minor third, which is only a half step. So that's the only difference, this one. The last thing we play is a whole step. This one is a half step. So, right? This is my favorite part of the song. Okay, and then we do the exact same pair, except instead of B flat to A, it's gonna be A flat to G. So the A flat is major, and the G is minor. So all together, Sounds really cool. So um, you know that you've got it right when you can start to feel the sort of, the right hand, the pick go into this sort of sweep motion of one, two, three, four, and then you get the last one with an upstroke, one, two, three, four, five. In fact, you might wanna try just that, muting up the strings with your left hand and going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, like that. Um, so give it some time. And that's sort of a, a little transitional thing that goes on there. And then they go into like, I get what I guess would be like sort of the chorus of the song, uh, which is this arpeggio. It's sort of like a really interesting A minor arpeggio up here. Sort of returning to this idea of A minor uh, squaring off against an F, F major, or an F major seven. So here's the A minor part. Still with that one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. But now it's fifth string down to the second string and then an upstroke. Uh, so uh, the tab for this would be like zero, 10, nine, nine, 10. So you end up with a classic A minor triad uh, like that with this sort of major seventh. Uh, added to it. So it's kind of like a minor major seventh chord in terms of the effect that you get. Um, and then that switches to the sort of F major seven in fifth position, which is a really nice chord. If you're not used to this, it's sort of a C voicing is how I think of it. Like it's sort of like C major with you had a capo here on five. 
except the capo is your index finger. You play the, the major seventh, right? The sort of E on the, on the second string. And then you add the, the last finger, the, set, the middle finger here to create the F at the top. And this basically happens one and a half times. You do the A minor. Four times on that. And then four of these. That's once. And then we go back to the A minor. Four more times. We don't go back to the F. Instead, go back to the D minor. This is going to be a lot like the, the first section. Um, but I add a little bit more strumming and a little more energy to it. So uh, start with the sort of sus2 version. You know, I'll sort of keep it a little bit clean and then after that last note, just add as much rhythm as you're comfortable with. Um, so. Uh, and then that's going to go to C add nine. And I'm doing it this way because I want to play the C in a second as part of the melody. Right, so again, that's C add nine. You end up with a regular C major. Then E7, the C major to E7 always sounds really cool and dramatic. And the seventh is up here on the second string, that, that, that D note, that's the seventh, the, dominant, the flat, flat seven of the E major chord. Right, we end up with this, with sort of a E with an F, sort of uh, like an E flat nine, I guess. Um, and then that resolves back to the B, or like, I don't know if it resolves, but it goes to the B flat uh, chord. That does kind of fall back into the A minor, which is that's really nice. That's sort of like a B flat uh, with an open E at the top. I let it ring out. To the A minor. All right, then we're almost to the home stretch here. We go back up to the F in fifth position. Right? Then we play the D minor in fifth position using that open, open D string. I'm using these melody notes of C, B, and A on the high E string. You know, with some strumming, some like energy and stuff. And then we end in the final thing, and the final run to the end is exactly an octave transposition of that first thing, arpeggio thing that we did with B flat down here. Except we're gonna use this B flat, and it's the exact same shape. Uh, although it feels a little different because you have the tuning difference at the B string, but it actually makes it easier to play. You don't have to reach back for the ninth. The ninth is like right there. So when we play the B flat, it's just like that. Then we go back to the B, uh, A minor, right? Then we go back to the A flat major and then G minor, right? So that, it's really fun. Uh, you try to mute with this hand. If you're getting a lot of noise, some of the, sometimes with sweep picking, the trick to getting it to sound clean isn't so much in the left hand, it's, it's in the right hand as well. Uh, and it's not so much the notes that you're playing, it's muting the notes that you're not playing and trying to keep everything clean. Uh, so, Whoops. Let me do it again. There it is. And then you finally, after you hit that last, um, what is that, a B flat, you, you come back to the A5. And then, to add a little effect, you hit the picking behind the nut. All right, so I pretty much explained that to death. Hopefully that'll help you uh, learn how to play it. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and uh, good luck learning this song, and uh, I'll have to show you another song soon in the future.